Yeah, so diagnostic session. Now I just want to quickly have a look and see. It's had me running around the vehicle looking for the plug and it's down here, down here, centre console, hidden, 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 hidden. So please wait until this old piece of crap talks. So yeah, we gotta go right down to the bottom of the list. Opal Voxel, yeah, let's have Opal Voxel, please. 2020, yeah, this is bang up to date, actually. Uh, right down the bottom of the list again, 2002, 2001, 2002, it's on the crossover, and it's howling out there. I'm gonna shut the window. Okay, so automatic idea with this, pretty good. And let's see what she's got to say, because what I'm looking for is DTCs. The EOBD on this side is probably better than the generic um, stuff, but there is live data here. Engine, list, fitted, yeah, okay. Starting to communicate, and then I'll have a look at the codes, see if anything comes up, yeah. I did actually go in this before. And, uh, right. Oh, look at this. Oh, I, oh my God, there's a whole load. Immobilizer, immobilizer, wrong signal, wrong transponder key, EGR, cylinder one, two, three, and five. <laughs> that's five, it's looking at a five cylinder, five cylinder motor, yeah? Open circuit on all of them? Yeah, well, actually, there isn't anything other than EGR. On that, that could be of any interest. Cylinder do injector faulty, meh. Don't think so. Welcome back, guys and girls. Everybody has a neighbor like this, and I've got one too. Andy, Land Rover owner. Straight through exhaust, 300 TDI lifted Land Rover Discovery off-roader. So, you want to hear this, don't you? You want to hear this go. You want to hear him uh, spool up and uh, blow the exhaust out, don't you? So the excitement's over and uh, well, let's get back to the fly. So the gasket was fitted as you can see here and all I need to do now is fit a few things back on. It is actually nice to get to the engine so the airbox was off and then around the front here the radiator was taken out. So what I uh, like to do while I'm in the garage is listen to something just to keep my mind occupied as well. You know, some background noise and a bit of company. So this is Robert Green's uh, Art of Seduction, which is 21 hours of listening to a guy giving historic accounts of uh, seducers. Interesting. So anyway, yeah, the old uh, Jubilee clips, yeah, they're quite uh, the norm, aren't they? Or they used to be until they came up with a different type of clip. Now I have a tool here. This was acquired by, uh, or should I say it was acquired uh, from Snap-on, but it does this type of clip. This is the devil's clip, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, this tool works really well. I can access most things. Modern manufacturers want to have things assembled quickly. Now, if you'll notice on the pipes, they have white markers, and this is for the guys who are doing the assembling, but it also helps us to reassemble properly. So, uh, very quick job, no screwing Jubilee clips down. This is just a spring clip, as it were. So I put them in the right place and we're good. So all the pipe works on and I'm impressed with this voxel because everything's clipped up. It has markers where the uh, clips should be, or if there should be clips, there should be markers. And this, uh, this is all arranged so nothing chafes, which is good, okay. And yeah, I've got to do that clip, but you can see how it's all clipped up, which uh, some vehicles, uh, older vehicles don't have. And we used to suffer from problems, chafing and the such like. So yeah, it's short work putting all the pipe work back on when you can actually grab the clip. But this uh, tool is pretty good. So if you see it and you do work like this and you want one of these, you can probably find it on eBay. Now you know what it looks like, yeah? 
I had a problem with this when it came to filling it all the system up and uh, what I did is I filled the header tank right up and it wouldn't go anywhere annoying kept squeezing the pipes nothing would happen well what I found is if I removed the clip and lifted up the header tank the uh, fluid level would be well above the engine and it would drain down yeah just like that you see so this is the way we go whether it was designed from Vauxhall like this or not don't know but it seems to work I put antifreeze in first and then put water on top of that and that will mix as the engine runs and uh, circulates the coolant the other thing uh, these voxels they have screw in non lockable caps and no you don't usually get swarf in the where the petrol cap would have been it's because I had to remove the locking cap that the last owner put on and never gave me the key for okay so that flap actually locks so with a little bit of magic I pull this back up and yep you can see I had to drill this out uh, not brilliant but at least now I can put some fuel in it yeah and <laughs> the gauge doesn't work very well so I've made sure I've got myself one of these petrol cans uh, just fill the baby up and then we can run her up so what you're seeing here basically is old oil being burnt on the manifold and what I'm doing is looking for the levels getting a hot checking for any pressure in the cooling system that seems to be okay now I, what I did was run it up to running operating temperature and then let it go further static so the fan should turn on and it did actually it did I was quite happy with that so you can hear it's running not very well inside here no this is not an electrical fault this is the dimming switch but you can see fuel gauge is nearly on empty and I have a service light on okay so yeah that actually went out a bit later on I just want to show you this first of all I thought okay cylinder head loads of steam and fluid coming out but no I, this was condensation there was no pressure in the header tank but there was a lot of condensation in the exhaust. Now I'm hoping, very much hoping, that it, the head gasket isn't leaking. I still don't know yet. A little bit later on, once it got warm, it got up to 90 degrees centigrade, the service light went out. Yep, so there's no mill light on, there's no service light on, yet it's not running the best it should have been. And the <laughs> gauge here is telling me it's, it's minus 40 ambient temperature, which is quite odd because it was probably about... 13 degrees centigrade outside so that is faulty don't think it um, messes up the system at all so did a little bit of a diagnostic session on this because I wanted to know about the lambda sensors to see if they were at least operating and they were and uh, other than co2 stuff there isn't actually much more I could see on this so I will talk about this right now there's no reaction whatsoever from the long-term fueling strategy but there is in short term and you can see with the short-term fueling strategy that it's mirroring something, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the long-term one is doing nothing. It's doing nothing, yeah? It is just sitting there. Now, whether that's, that's time-derived or not, I don't know. Short-term is um, reactions very, very quickly long term is over uh, a longer term strategy where it's adjusting it so you're getting the correct emissions all the time yeah and it's doing nothing it's doing absolutely nothing it's sitting flat line you can see that can't you yeah whether that means something or not i do not know but it's something to make inquiries into Obviously, the O2 sensors have voltage on them because they're reacting. Yeah. So I'll just start her up here, and there is a slight misfire on it now. And I'm, I'm really, because I'm a diesel fitter, I don't quite understand it, but this is uh, more investigation required. She just misfires every now and then, even though she's running a bit smoother, which I think it was due to lack of fuel. If you were diligent there, or if you knew, then you know that the hydraulic tappets aren't exactly right. The camshafts are rattling like an old sewing machine. 
There is a kit on eBay for uh, £218, which is the two camshafts, the followers, and the hydraulic tappets, which actually works out quite well, and it is suitable for this engine, which is the Z4 or Z12 XEP engine. Yeah, so this is something to save up for because looking at the camshafts they are actually worn and the case hardening is coming off the camshafts as you can see here by the coloration of them but before then and really need to get the rear brakes done which is the shoes hubs drums and wheel cylinders plus the shock absorbers the prices actually aren't too bad on this vehicle but we can all dream it's all bit by bit next thing i have to do is talk up the wheel nuts before i do anything else or even take it for a road test Okay, so we got to the point of road test. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I've just got to show you also, survivalist technique, it's baling twine. Well, it's the next uh, upgrade from baling twine is black insulation tape for electricity components, yeah? And I've had to do the key. Yes. It's <laughs> this car is like a bundle of, bundle of laughs, yeah? So anyway, took it for a road test. I need to get some wiper blades from Halfords and I was actually privileged that they asked me if I wanted my wiper blades fit and I said yeah that sounds good is that free no five pounds yeah that's a good hourly rate five pounds for what 30 seconds on each yeah brilliant you know so yeah I'll do it myself of course I do it myself anyway <laughs> this is the uh, pierce de resistance and I'm uh, driving along and I know that this didn't have any grindy brake sounds and I took off and I thought, hang on a minute, it's grinding. Okay, I'll come back. No, it's not the handbrake. The, the, the brakes seem to work all right on the rear. And I couldn't work it out. The faster I went, the louder it got, but it was irregular. It was burp, 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 burp. Now, I couldn't record it with the camera. Um, however, I thought, no, I've got to strip the brakes down. <laughs> and... Uh, not now, because it's raining like hell. Well, actually, it stopped, but it was... I'm... I'm I'm soaked, I'm soaked, yeah, and I thought, not now, it's it's Saturday, and I've got to get to work on Monday, yeah, nowhere I can get a brake kit from, and I thought, right, oh, fuck, this is, <laughs> this is another day off from work, yeah, so, no, it turned out that there was a bit of body work, I must have knocked it, putting it in the garage or something, rubbing on the tyre, yeah, fuck, I thought, great, okay, so that's that, grindy noise out of the way and you'd be surprised how loud that was because uh, that was resonating through the whole car but i knew it was on the back somewhere yeah a uh, handbrake on anyway um that's crap so that's going to be cables and shoes yeah cable shoes and wheel cylinders wheel cylinder kit with shoes um for the whole axles like 53 quid so i can imagine the cables aren't that much more expensive either yeah so we're on to a winner with this car it's a cheap little uh cheap little thing to run but I haven't got a steam cleaner here, so there's a lot of smoke coming off the, the exhaust manifold because I haven't burnt all the oil off yet. But it runs. Yeah, listen. Yeah, starts up, runs, it's all right. Temperature seems to hold. Anyway, I'm going to go on another road test now. I've got rid of that fucking noise. Oh, God. Do you know what it's like when it goes, <laughs> you think, yeah, okay, that's another expensive noise, but no. But at least I've got a clear screen now. The other wipers were completely and utterly wanked, yeah? And I mean, no blade left on them. And well, anyway, it's surprising you can do a car up if it's not too bad, yeah, with a little bit of money. With a little bit of money, you can do anything, can't you? So anyway, I give this a bit of loving and this needs to serve me for a little while. MOT is until uh, January and the uh, um, the Citroen that I got oh sorry no December this is December and the, the Citroen I got till January so have a little bit of a crossover I'll get that Citroen going and I think it's injector seals to be honest with you but we'll see um, this one still got work to do on it so fingers crossed fingers crossed you ain't gonna go wrong <laughs> that's all I'm hoping for at the moment because time's money for me and I don't really want to be losing any time from work because that is money isn't it yeah anyway whoops got the mobile phone got a bluetooth kit that came with the car that's probably worth more than the car and away we go yeah 
When I bought this vehicle, I gave it a road test and did it lock to lock steering and I did indeed get a, uh, a noise from one of the CV joints and the CV joint is knackered. This was on the near side passenger side. It clicks as you go around the corner. Further inspection revealed that the boot had come off so that's screwed but I can take this now and recondition it put a new CV joint on it. I did get a knocking noise going over bumps and that was because this linkage was loose. So I've replaced this and that's only temporary but now I'm uh, doing a test drive and I've just come back from the test drive. Do a brake test and then I'm going to talk to you about this test drive when I've come to a stop. <laughs> I'm going to turn that right down now. Boom. Okay. Nice and peaceful. I've just got to show you something here. Look. That is a bodge. Key strap to the fob. Yeah. There's a transducer in there and it needs to be very close to the ring around where the key ignition barrel is. If it's not there, then it won't start. Now, obviously, something happened to this and yeah, it hasn't got the proper key to it, but it's got the uh, the chauffeur's key. Well, it's a key you can get in with. Um, I tried to get the transducer out of this and glue it inside there so I didn't have to worry about this palaver, but it won't happen. This sort of thing is a real pain in the backside if they go wrong. But you always have a transducer which will tell the immobilizer that that is the right key, okay? I need to get something else programmed in. Right, so road test. Um, what I generally do is tune myself into the vehicle completely and just feel what's going on. I've got a knockdown on that side, which is I know is an ARB because I know that sound, okay? Brakes pull up fairly okay now it's had new pads across the front so i've taken it easy just to bed them in first of all rears okay that there is brake there otherwise it would be pushed to be dipping forward yeah steering very very light actually on this car but she's pulling up straight when i'm braking yeah you see here And yeah, she drives all right. Um, no complaints about it. She's not complaining. She's not stuttering or anything like that. It's pretty good. And yeah, I tuned in for a while and I drove to fill the car as well as paying attention to the road. But then I turned the radio on and I know I'm messing about, but with this, you're cutting all the sounds off and you're actually feeling with your body and if, if there's anything like suspension or when you hit a bump without the knocks there you tend to feel whether it is right or not yeah and then you know just relax and enjoy myself because after a while it's like well you know I don't want to tune into the car or should I say I don't want to make it conscious all the time yeah so it's all right for what it is at the moment there are problems with this vehicle definitely problems which we will get around and we'll iron all this stuff out yeah because it's just endless it's absolutely endless an old nail is exactly what it is it's an old nail but we can get it to a standard where it's all right yeah and i don't know if any of you guys are learning anything from me um let me know in the comments below if you are yeah because i'd like to share stuff with you Right, so now I've got to go and check for leaks. I'll let her sit for a while so, till she's cool and then I can have a look round her again. There is a bit of a rainbow puddle <laughs> outside the front where this has been sitting, but I don't know where that's come from. Perhaps it's just uh, excess oil. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So anyway, that's it. That's it for me from today. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, George? <laughs> see you later.